Johnson. Hi guys, this is Dr. Sherry Johnson and I am going to talk to you today about the COV-19 virus. Um, I sent an email out to everybody. A lot of people are asking questions and so I'm going to try to make this short and sweet and I've got basically four topics I want to talk about. Um, first the one, I want to explain what COV-19 means. Um, basically CO stands for Corona, which is a strain. Um, and the V stands for virus. So it's a strain of the virus, the coronavirus, and 19 is the year it started. So they believe that this started somewhere between November and December of 2019. It basically was transmitted from animal to human, and then it slowly has mutated and changed uh, transmitting from human to human. So it's a little bit different from the flu because everybody says, oh, it's the same as the flu. Well, it really isn't. A flu has a RNA and a DNA strand. And what has happened because this is transmitted from an animal, its RNA strand is a little different. That's why we're having difficulty building immunity to it. But we are. We're slowly getting antibodies for these. So I want to tell you that this little podcast video is um, not something that I'm telling you how to stop the virus or how to cure yourself from the virus. Um, for legal reasons, I'm just letting you know that this is an informative video on the research that we've currently had. What we see that helps uh, boost our immune system, helps with the immune system of the lungs, and really what we're kind of finding out about COV-19 and what it's doing to the body. So let's get started. Um, COV is, as everybody has seen the pictures, is a round virus with these little spikes. And the spikes are what's causing the problem. Uh, the spikes are very long and they're attaching to receptors on our cell membranes. And they're 10 times more sticky. So we like to call it slippery and sticky because they're sticking to our membranes and it's harder for them to pull off and break up. And so it's causing this attachment to um, affect multiple cells and therefore it's growing more. It's reproducing, it's replicating more. Um, one thing that I want to emphasize is pretty much by now, if you watch the news or you listen to anything or commercials, you're going to know the symptoms. But I want to explain a few symptoms that you may not know about that they don't emphasize. Um, they do know that some of the symptoms are mild GI symptoms before you get the respiratory symptoms. Now, the reason I'm going to tell you this is because as I further go down in this explanation, I'm going to explain how the gut is involved in this um, process of us contracting COV. Um, but what they have found is that these people are having mild diarrhea, nausea, nausea vomiting, abdominal discomfort, uh, way before they have the respiratory symptoms. Um, they also found that 23% of the patients who tested negative in the respiratory sample tested, you know, the one where they shove it up your nose and they have you spin in, they did find that they tested positive for COV-19 in their fecal samples. So this is very important. This is something that we're starting to become aware of that um, the gut may be uh, related to what's happening with these people getting infected as well. So it may also change the way we're testing people since we're finding that the respiratory samples are coming out negative, but the fecal samples are coming out positive. Um, another symptom that they may or may not be mentioning is they found that most of the people who have been contracted COV-19 loses their sense of smell and the, and the sense of taste before they start having respiratory symptoms. So we wanna let you know about that as well. That clue right there lets us know that this virus will attack the central nervous system. And this gives us a little bit more insight on what it's doing to the body. So this kind of helps us in what's going on with the transmission, how our body's responding to it, and how we can prevent 
from maybe not contracting it, but not having severe symptoms due to it. So most of us already know the main reasons that we contract it is we're finding out through breath, we're finding out through um, sputum, we're finding out through hands that we're touching it, and we're trying to avoid touching our face, and we're now finding out that it's contractible through tears in our eyes, and therefore you're starting to see more people wearing sunglasses or face masks, and that's where we're trying to figure out how it's entering the system. Again, the advice that I'm going to give you are things to keep our immune system up so that if we contract it, we're able to fight it. Um, long story short, I did a phenomenal seminar uh, where it explained what COV-19 is, what it's doing to our immune system, how it's breaking down. But as I was watching the seminar, and kind of listening to the presenter, uh, I realized it was very, very in depth and the average person really doesn't care about the biomechanics of it. Um, you would have to have a full knowledge of the immune system, most of us don't. So I've explained it in the past in a lot of my podcasts. Um, there's a podcast that talks about high blood pressure. There's a podcast that talks about leaky gut and dysbiosis. Um, even my weight loss podcast, uh, and I have immune system podcasts. And these all, if you listen to them, I've already kind of given you a 101 anatomy of the immune system. So if you really want to get into the biology of it, I would refer you to go back to that. But today, I found that more people just want to know well, what's going on, what's happening, what can I do to help myself, why is this spreading so much? So what it really comes down to is inflammation. There's the end all be all. Um, that's the meat and potatoes of it all is um, we're having something called a cytokine storm. And if you had attended my blood sugar cleanse program um, in my uh, video, I explain what cytokines are. So cytokines are basically inflammation. That's what it is. And they are a type of white blood cell. And what they do is in the body, they recognize something that's foreign or out of place. It shouldn't be there. And they will kind of go and attack it and surround it. And they cause this inflammation in the body. And what that is, is a signal to other white blood cells, which is immune cells, to come and attack, kill, and eat. And those are called neutrophages, uh, neutrophils, I'm sorry, and macrophages. So the cytokines are what signals these important neutrophils and macrophages. Now, the reason people who have diabetes, cardiovascular disease, autoimmune disorders, etc., these people have disorders that already cause a high inflammatory issue, all right? So you already have a lot of inflammation going on in the body. You already have um, neutrophils and macrophages attacking it. And when you bring COV, another foreign object in there that causes more inflammation, this is where it starts breaking down organs and organ systems. That's why when you're older, um, you usually have a lower immune system, you usually have a higher inflammatory process. Um, people with diabetes, cardiovascular, autoimmune, um, we're trying to keep them at home because we already know they have a high inflammatory. The people who have caught COV and recovered or they have very mild symptoms, Usually those are people whose um, an inflammation in their body is at a little bit of a lower rate, um, a low enough to where the immune system can fight this new, new virus off. People who are asymptomatic, we're finding that they really have a good, healthy lifestyle. And therefore, when they get this, um, they don't have a lot of inflammation in their body, and so therefore the body can do its process like it only can and stop it before this COV starts growing or replicating. 
So that's why I kind of want my, my patients to know it's about inflammation, inflammation, inflammation. So that when I start telling you things to help your immune system and help you out, um, it's just not supplements and things of that nature, but it's going to be a lifestyle change. And that is what's important. And I think that's what you're going to find out when this is all over. You should start seeing your insurance company. You should start seeing your doctors and your healthcare professionals stop treating symptoms and start treating lifestyle changes. And so we're going to explain those lifestyle changes. So one of the main inflammatory causing diseases that most people don't think about is obesity. And so at one hospital, they started looking at their patients that were recovering and they found out that a majority of them that were recovering, if not all of them, had a BMI under 26. So, you know, your BMI is how you kind of evaluate, are you obese or not? And what they have found is that people who are above that BMI um, are the ones more likely to contract it and have to go into the hospital and have to be treated. The higher the obesity rate, the more likely, plus, plus another um, condition that they have, are more likely to be on ventilators. So if this is not a wake-up call, um, if you've listened to my past podcast, I always say there's nothing wrong with the shape of a woman's body or a man's body. What the problem is, is being obese is not attractive, as in not physically attractive to look at you, but not healthy attractive. And this right now is the stamp on the envelope, if anything, that we can't stop. We can't keep saying that being fat is okay. Being obese is okay. It's not, guys, because you can verbally think it's okay, but that virus doesn't care. It will attack that body quicker than anything because it's already a weak system. If you don't understand why obesity causes that, it's not only because your dietary lifestyle, but here's why guys, those fat cells actually hold toxins in them. And those toxins have an inflammatory reaction inside the cells. So all the fat that you're carrying on your body is just walking inflammation and your body's constantly trying to fight that. Throw that COV-19 on top of it and it doesn't have a chance. Okay, I just am stating the facts and being realistic with you guys. If you're at home, this is the time to put down the Dorito chips. Stop buying the Coca-Cola and the sodas and the Gatorade that I've seen everybody buying at this grocery store. Pick up some fruits, some vegetables, eat some good protein. Stay away from the stuff that's boxed and canned. You're just adding to that inflammation. The end. If you're not sure and you feel confused, again, go back to my podcast my blood sugar podcast, my sugar's the silent killer podcast. That explains how sugar and processed food is leading to high inflammation in the body and is killing us. It's one of our number one chronic disorders now is metabolic syndrome in the United States of America. It is about to pass cardiovascular disease, cancers, everything else. You're going to start seeing this is a big topic because America does not eat healthy. We eat too many processed foods, too many sodas, too many canned drinks, um, not enough water, not enough fruits, not enough vegetables. And if you're staying at home right now, this is the time. This is the time right now to start changing your diet and take all that box stuff and throw it out. It is a waste. It is a waste. All right, so I'm going to keep going to where I'm saying that they have already shown that the obesity is a a leading factor why these people are getting this because it causes inflammation and that they have seen correlations that 60% of adults in America has one of the underlying conditions we mentioned and obesity is the top for 60% of Americans, 60%. That is a lot, guys. That is a lot. All right. So let me go into, we kind of, I kind of just wanted to explain that really inflammation is the key thing that I want to look at um, because most of you guys know where we're transmitting this disease. 
But what I do want to say is um, watch out when you bring it home. If you have somebody with these underlying conditions or you're worried that you might be a topic um, for consideration for COV-19. Um, this virus does stick on plastics, steel, the bottom of your shoes. The bottom of your shoes, it will stick on the bottom of your shoes. So we do ask people, my household, we've changed it. We've completely scrubbed our floors. And now you have to leave your shoes outside before you come into the house. Um, I work in a clinic still. So when I come in the house, I immediately take my scrubs off. I throw them in the washer before I sit on anything. Um, fabric, not so much, but they do... They don't know much about the fabric, so we just, as a precautionary. So if you're going out to Lowe's or places like that, you do have to understand that there are some asymptomatic people. These are people who we mentioned before probably has a very low inflammatory um, process in their body. So therefore, if they catch it, their body can nip it in the bud real quick. Those cytokines can attack it. Um, and so they're not going to really have symptoms but they may be carriers and therefore you are someone who has not only one underlying condition, two, three, four, you go out to these public places. This person might be talking to you. You don't realize they don't have a virus because they're not sick and therefore you get it. And this is why they're wanting everybody to wear masks, number one, so you don't touch your face and rub your eyes and get it. And that therefore also if somebody's asymptomatic, they're not spreading it to you. So even though you're not sick, um, if you think you have one of these underlying conditions, we recommend that you do wear a mask. Um, and, you know, if, if, if you're worried about other people who may be symptomatic and you're thinking, well, I don't have cardiovascular disease or diabetes or an autoimmune issue, but gosh, I am quite overweight, I would wear a mask as well. I'm wearing a mask anyway in my clinic uh, and I wear gloves. But I won't lie to you, I'm above my normal weight that I should be. So that is one of my concerns. And at this point, we've converted our dietary plans for this. And I'll explain that, what we're doing. So there was a great guy um, who quoted this at John Hopkins. And he says, coronavirus, and I'm going to have to read this because I always kind of forget it. But coronavirus is like a robber who breaks in your home. He eats your food, he destroys your furniture, and then he has 10,000 babies, and then he leaves your home. And that's kind of what's happening with coronavirus. It comes in, all it wants to do is find a host and replicate multiple times. And when it does that, it starts attacking other organ systems. So it's not just the lungs, it'll start attacking other systems. And so I think y'all need to understand that, because I think you're thinking it's just respiratory, but it's not. Um, so. The other thing they found also that is a symptom, and I mentioned this before that they're putting glasses is because um, some people would have a disorder in the eye like conjunctivitis um, before they start having respiratory systems. And that's because it's attacking the upper part. So I'm not gonna go into the biology of COV. I will later, if people are really interested in what it's doing and how it's attaching the cell membrane and why it's at attacking the lung. But I feel like most of my patients are more concerned about what do I need to do to prevent to get this? Um, other than cleaning my home and washing my hands, what do I need to do to keep my immune system up? So I'm gonna kind of explain this. Um, as I said before, it's inflammation is the key thing. Now, we want to keep the immune system up and lower the inflammation. So diet is the number one. And that's what I was explaining to you before. Stay away from the box. Let's do more vegetables. Let's do more fruit. But guys, I know my patients. I talk to you guys all the time. And when I do my blood sugar cleanse classes, um, people at that point, do not realize until then how much fruit they are consuming. And they're consuming 10 times more fruit than they are vegetables, even though they quote unquote say they eat healthy. Um, when we do our blood sugar cleanse, they start realizing, oh my gosh, I eat way more fruit. And fruit is good for you. Uh, the reason why is we'll explain the vitamin C in it and the antioxidants. But the problem is, is 10 times more fruit than vegetables is not good for you because it causes your blood sugar to rise and 
the blood sugar and the sugar in your body is what causes inflammation and it causes a cytokine reaction. And the coronavirus also causes a cytokine reaction. When we have too much inflammation, um, it starts attacking our organs, just to let you know. Now, I like to encourage people to um, change their diet and increase their supplementation that helps. Now, two studies that were done, I think one was done on, Mar on April the 3rd through nutri the nutrition study. Um, and one was done on like April the 1st. So I'm a little bit behind, but they have already shown supplementation of vitamin D um, and vitamin C is helping reduce the um, proliferation of this virus. So in other words, the replication. So one hospital in New York City is using 1,500 milligrams three times a day, I believe, intravenously of vitamin C to help um, lower the symptoms and reduce the replication. They're getting actually some good results from that. Um, vitamin D, they're getting superb results from that. Another hospital is starting to use vitamin D um, and they're finding excellent results. Now, vitamin D, um, I personally encourage people to get their vitamin D from their sunlight. We're in the South. This is the perfect time. The weather is great. Um, 15 minutes of direct sunlight, it can even be on the arm, is phenomenal for getting your vitamin D. It's that UVB radiation from the sun and the way it's converted. I personally like sunlight. Um, if you can't do that, and I, when I say sunlight, I am totally against SPF. I'm sure some dermatologists is flipping out right now. I think SPF is very toxic toward you. Uh, there's some other research to back it up. But if you're going to try to do natural um, vitamin D through sunlight for 15 minutes, uh, don't have any form of SPF on there. You're not going to absorb it like you're supposed to. If you have to have a vitamin D supplement, obviously get vitamin D. My personal favorite to kill two birds with one stone is cod liver oil. I love cod liver oil because you get your omegas. Cod liver actually has natural vitamin A and vitamin D. And the combination of the three works really well with your system. As I tell my patients, it's kind of like the old little rascal show where you used to see them pour this liquid in the spoon and feed it to the kids. And they'd be like, Ugh! that was cod liver oil. It has been used forever by families, especially during the winter season, because they knew years ago that fish oil had the vitamin D in it and the A, and it supports the immune system. So um, I typically tell my patients you should at least have 5,000 milligrams, especially if you're in a chronic state, you're always in pain, um, you have an autoimmune issue, anything where you have a high inflammatory issue, um, you need to have about 5,000 milligrams. That's going to usually be five big fat pills. You can do it. I promise you, you can do it. Um, I would recommend that. You know, the other thing what they're trying to do is find out what lowers the inflammation and fights, um, fights the virus off, builds your immunity, and also what helps something called um, the ACE2 receptor um, in the lung. And one of them is melatonin. Melatonin, people think of melatonin as just for sleep, but it's really good for the immune system in the lungs. So they've shown that melatonin does a great job in fighting in this. Zinc. Um, now, zinc, guys, I personally, I'm going to plug later on Standard Process. That's one of my vitamin companies I go through. Um, I like their zinc liver chelate. I like zinc to be natural. That means it comes from your food or it comes from an animal source when you're getting your vitamins and minerals. I don't like synthetic vitamins and minerals personally. So I like zinc liver chelate because they get that from the liver. Um, the other one is glutathione. Uh, glutathione is needed for detoxing and clearing out toxins and rebuilding the immune system. That's a supplement that you can also take. Um, we encourage elderberry. I have said for years, elderberry and echinacea together are phenomenal. Echinacea is a primer. So what it does is it kind of announces 
hey, white blood cells, get ready. We need to be get as many of our soldiers together to fight um, a foreign invader. And elderberry actually is going to kill viruses. It actually goes in and it's your ammunition and it actually kills it. So when I recommend elderberry, I typically recommend an echinacea and elderberry together. Now, I went to a farmer's market a while back and there was somebody who was making um, homemade elderberry syrup. And I think that's great. Um, if you're in an area where you do grow elderberries or you get them, please, please, please make sure they're organic. Uh, the reason why is we don't want somebody spraying these berries with anything because that is toxic. When you swallow it, um, it leads to those cytokines coming in saying there's a foreign chemical in here. And then now we're starting the whole neutrophil and macrophage uh, process and we're just making it worse. So everything that I recommend, try to get it organic. The other thing that we found that works really well for these um, immune systems. And again, I won't go through the biology. I can break down specifically how it helps, but it's pointless unless you understand it. Um, stinging nettle. And I love nettle tea. I buy it all the time. Um, I mix it with um, elderberry tea that I have. I think tea is easy. It's a very, very low dose. It shouldn't interfere with medication. You just have to drink a lot of cups of it through it. But um, for me, I talk all day. And so it's very easy for me to have five or six cups of stinging nettle with elderberry tea. Uh, so if you cannot find uh, the supplement or the product somewhere because they are flying off the shelf, always remember you can go toward teas. Just, just know that one cup of tea of that is not going to be sufficient enough because they are in low doses. The other thing that we like to recommend is ginger. They're finding that ginger does very well for the immune system. Curcumin, curcumin is what you hear with turmeric. Turmeric has the phytochemical curcumin in it, and it really helps with inflammation. So you'll see a lot of um, ginger and turmeric tea. That's why the combination together really helps lower the inflammation. A lot of you might be already taking this because maybe you have arthritis or you have some aches and pains and you've heard this. Keep it up. This might be what's helping you a little bit. Um, so the other one that I want to suggest is mushrooms. When I say mushrooms, I'm not talking about the white button mushrooms. Um, we're talking about shiitake, mataki, turkey tail. Turkey tail is sometimes hard to come by, but turkey tail they use in cancer treatments. It's a phenomenal mushroom. And then they have, um, lion's mane. Lion's mane is a good mushroom. So sometimes over in Asian markets, if you really look at certain grocery stores, sometimes grocery stores already have a lot of these combination of mushrooms together. I like to make a good old fashioned bone broth soup with these. Again, if you go on my immune podcast, I talk about bone broths and soups, uh, good old fashioned chicken noodle soup using bone broth is great for keeping your immune system up and lowering uh, a lot of this inflammation. When you do that, we want a lot of garlic. We want a lot of onions uh, because you'll notice that garlic and onions are great fighters for bacteria and viruses. Throw those unique mushrooms in there. Again, we're not talking about a portobello or a button mush white button mushroom. We're talking about the shiitake, mataki, turkey tail, and lion's mane. Uh, there's one more I'm missing. But um, throw those in your soups. Leek. We've been buying leek like crazy, and I love making a leek and celery soup for my daughter using coconut oil because coconut oil is an anti-inflammatory, and she eats it like crazy, and it's the quickest, simplest recipe. If anybody's wanting it, you are quite welcome to email me. I may have added that in one of my blogs where I talk about immune system in the broth. Um, berberine. Berberine is a phytochemical that actually helps repair the gut lining. And what we're finding out again, that there is a correlation between the gut and the lungs, which I'm gonna do another presentation about it. But what I wanna do right now is kind of help you through what you might add into your diet right now to help your immune system. Uh, probiotics, by all means, probiotics, they're showing a fantastic correlation. Again, it has to deal with gut. Uh, a particular pro probiotic, is Basilica subtilis. 
Um, but I usually tell my patients, go ahead and start doing sauerkraut. I just had made a homemade chicken salad with eggs and celery and sauerkraut in it. Sounds probably gross, but it was really good. Um, kombucha is really good for you. That is a fermented drink. Some people do like kombucha mixed with ginger and turmeric. Go for it if you want to. But the key thing in this is there's a lot of kombuchas out there that have a high, high sugar count. And I am trying to emphasize to you guys, anything over seven grams of sugar put up. If you pull a box that has over seven grams of sugar per serving, I would highly just recommend and just put it up. You're asking for trouble. So on your drinks, even though you might be thinking in your head like orange juice is really good for you, orange juice is one of the worst things. It's got a lot of sugar in it. Put it up. It's not full of vitamin C. I'd rather you eat a whole orange with the fiber and the pith because that's the white stuff. That's actually better for you than drinking the dang juice. So if you're going to do kombucha, uh, the reason some people might like it is probably because it's something that has a lot of sugar in it. Um, it should be that uh, vinegary kind of uh, sassy taste to it if you're getting the real deal stuff. So make sure you get a low one. Um, the last but not least that I want to recommend is foods that are going to help you. So I mentioned the garlic. I mentioned the onions. I did not mention the lemons, but we have been making homemade lemonade no sugar in it. I do replace it with stevia, but lemons are full of that vitamin C and they're really good when you combine, combine it with the garlic and the onion. So a lot of my vegetables, I will cook with garlic, onions, and I'll squeeze some lemon juice in there, uh, fresh pressed preferably, just to help boost the immune system. It's known for helping kill viruses. We're not sure about COV-19, but what's it going to hurt you? We want to help clear out the liver because it's what clears out a lot of the toxins. So we're going to go more toward cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, kale, um, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts. I love asparagus. Asparagus is a good kidney cleanser. Chinese medicine always recommends it. That's another detoxing organ. So we want to support those kidneys with asparagus. Um, okra is very good. We want to stay away from dairy. And a lot of times in my cleanses, I will include some dairy in there. But this time we want to stay away from it because dairy produces a lot of mucus. And we don't need a lot of mucus if we're trying to protect our lungs. Number two, juices like orange juice or anything with high sugar also produces a lot of mucus. So we want to stay away from those juices as well. So stay away from juices. And stay away from dairy. Go more toward um, water, which is the best cleansing thing you can have. And go more toward like um, the lemonade without the sugar in it, the kombucha, um, and the herbal teas, such as the stinging nettle and the elderberry. Um, those are very good for you. Now, I'm going to slightly throw in where the gut comes into play, but I'm not going to get too deep into it because later on I'm going to do a seminar about that. But I want to encourage you. We mentioned about some people have done the respiratory swab and it came out negative, but when they tested their fecal matter, it came out positive. So one of the first lines of defense for us is our IgA factors. And I'm going to do a really quick recap of our IgA factors or our Ig factors, which I believe I brought in to my colostrum podcast. So you have five of them and they are originally come from mommy and breast milk, just to be clear about this. That's why breastfeeding is so important because when you breastfeed, we provide those five Ag factors or and yeah, Ig factors, I'm sorry, those five Ig factors to the baby. And those five factors take care of bacterial, viral infections, allergies, milk allergies, and immune system all together. One factor that is very important, and they're starting to look at the correlation, is the IgA. 
the IgA factor is the very first line of defense. It starts in your mouth, all right, all up here where we're breathing all this stuff in. It goes down, the esophagus is still going down there all the way into your intestines. And it's the first one that starts fighting, okay? It's your first line, your soldiers start coming out to attack anything. When they start slowly losing the battle because you don't have enough IgA factors, then this is where your IgGs and IgMs all come through. Now, there is a test that's coming out. We are going to offer it to our patients next week. Some labs already have them, but it's a blood test. You prick your finger, you put it on this pad, and it's going to show if you have the antibodies. So it's going to show the IgM and the IgG factors. These are going to be your antibodies. These are going to say, I have attacked this foreign object. I have taken it down and I have won the war. And, and now that we know how to take these people down or take this, this particle down, we're going to build a whole bunch of us. So they'll never invade us again. And that's your IgG and IgM. So these are antibody tests. This will tell us if you've already contracted the COV-19 and if you've already built a defense line. If these come out positive, this means you already have the antibodies for it. This means you can go out in public because you should not be reinfected again. You already have your defense line. So this is very, very important. So if somebody thinks they may have had it and they've made it through it, but maybe they're testing it test positive or maybe they never got a test for positive, you can have these tests. Right now, um, I called the lab. At this point, the tabs, the, the tests run between $150 and $200 uh, plus or minus, depending on the, the necessity and the need and the requirements for it. Um, your health savings account or your flex plan should cover this, but I would recommend you call your insurance company if you are wanting it. Um, but this will be offered for, from us next week, hopefully, if we can get the lab to bring them in. So this explains how we have the first line of defense, IgA. It goes down to the intestines and it does its fighting and then it calls its other white blood cells in. And these are where the IgGs and IgMs and the IgEs and all of them come in and they all start working together. Now, here's where this is important. As I've told people in the past, a lot of allergies, a lot of chronic disease, a lot of this really stems from the gut. And we're really doing a lot more research in this and figuring this out, but your gut is your first line of defense. If your mouth, does not have enough IgAs because we're eating a lot of processed foods or foods that are chemical or something destroying it, and it does pass it. What the problem is, is uh, processed and chemical foods and GMOs, et cetera, will start breaking down your gut lining. And this is where we have something called leaky gut and dysbiosis. And when you have leaky gut or dysbiosis, every time you swallow a chemical or every time you breathe in a virus or a chemical and it passes down that gut lining, it can go through these leaky barriers and get into the blood system. When it gets into the blood system, it will circulate to all the organs. Now, the scary thing is, is this COV-19, um, the spikes attached to certain receptors on certain cell membranes, and it requires this purine enzyme. Um, and the strange thing about it is that's what's going to be found in the lungs, but it's also found in the brain. It's also found in the gut. It's found in a couple of other organs. And so you may start seeing where other organs are being attacked because it has those same kind of cell receptor enzymes. All right, so what they're starting to see is that because of those receptor enzymes, it may get through the digestive system, leak to the blood system, and then go back into the lung system. This is where we're looking at possibly the fecal or feces analysis 
um, to see if maybe there is a gut lung access. In other words, it gets down the gut. If you have a really bad gut that's leaking and it doesn't have enough immune system, hence that's why we encourage the probiotics, the sauerkraut, the kombucha, the fermented foods um, for good bacteria. If it can't fight it off, it will leak through in the blood system and it'll go to other organs. And they're looking at it going into the brain as well. These are studies that are being done and we're picking them up every day. And every day there's a change because this is something new for us guys. And hospitals are doing the best they can to survive and keep people going. But also we're trying to do research. For example, UAB here is finding out that um, nitric oxide helps with rebuilding the lung. That is something that we're looking at that they've seen help with past SARS and they're having good results. It just takes time for us to get the clinical research. So a lot of this is um, tiny little trials, seeing it on a few people and guessing. And so just remember that. So don't be part of that statistic. Try to keep your immune system up and hopefully if we can get some of these um, antibody tests out, we can see if people have already had them and therefore we can test your blood and see what is it that fights it. But right now, the key points I wanna get out to you guys is wash your hands. The reason why is um, the virus has an RNA, um, it has a protein on it, it has a fat on it, and which has a little lipid barrier that protects it. And funny enough, soap, actually breaks down that lipid barrier. So that's why soap works so well, because it breaks it down. And then when you wash it underwater, we are hoping you wash that virus out, so, or off of you. So soap and water for everything, think about that. Um, be careful on aerosol sprays like the Lysol. I've heard so many stories about women, I don't know why you're doing this to your kids, it's very toxic anyway. Lysol is very, very toxic to the body. Don't spray your child or their clothes down with Lysol. It, that is not healthy. You're going to actually cause more upper respiratory problems. Number two, those aerosols that you spray in the air um, actually will trap the virus and hold it for three hours. So we encourage people not to do it. If you're going to use Lysol, such as in our clinic, we spray it on a surface only and leave it there. Don't touch it. So you just spray it on a surface. So for example, you're going to spray it on the bottom of your shoe leave it, don't touch it, but never, never, never spray it on the human body. There are chemicals in there that penetrate through the body and actually they're going to cause more harm to you and your child. And actually when you spray it all over the place and in the air, you're actually trapping that virus in. So please don't do that. All right. We personally like to use a vinegar and an essential oil to spray in the air. Vinegar is really known for killing viruses, though I'm not going to say it kills COV-19. It's just good. You're better off with like a soap to spray in there because the soap breaks down the polylipid layer. Um, we have found um, herbs that help in the immune system and killing viruses are oregano, sage, thyme, um, rosemary. Um, I personally like clove um, and we'll use those. So I'm trying to think of anything else that I can help you with that may make you feel a little bit better or secure, but I'll just go over the key points. Get a lot of sleep, exercise, but don't do any high intensity exercise for two to three hours over. They have shown that people who over exercise, and that means two to three hours of high intensity, it actually lowers their immune system. So if you're going to do high intensity exercise, make it about an hour and then just stop. Allow your immune system to recover. We want to stay away from sugared and processed foods. We want to decrease our consumptions of fruits instead of having 10 servings, maybe just two servings a day. And we want to increase by 10 folds, 10 folds, your whole meal, three meals a day. You should have a large amount of vegetables and that's going to be your saving grace right there. We want to eat protein. Uh, you want to eat organic protein, um, you know, fish, eggs, uh, meat, 
chicken, I guess. Um, turkey's good. The darker the meat, the better it is for you, to be honest with you. Fish oils, I, again, I'm going to encourage you to do more cod liver oil just because it has the vitamin D and the vitamin A in it. We want more sunlight, more vitamin D. Um, increase your zinc. Melatonin is good for you. Um, add more herbs. Like I said before, we've been cooking a lot more vegetables in our household, and almost every single one is going to have some type of onion or garlic or lemon or ginger in it. And I like to get the fresh herbs of sage, thyme, and oregano, and I always throw it in my vegetables when I cook them, okay, just to get that in there. Now, Supplement wise, I'm going to go over supplements that I typically recommend that if you wanted to get um, through my clinic, I'm not guaranteeing this is going to cure COV-19 or prevent COV-19 or anything of that nature. I'm just giving you supplements that should help boost your immune system. It's what I take in my home. I have a humongous tray full of immune boosting supplements. And um, I'm going to let you know what they are. So first one that we took is something called Immuplex. Um, this is just great. They're all whole foods. Um, some of them are whole foods. Some of them have animal organs in them, uh, like for your glands, like adrenal glands, your spleen, your liver, things like that. And some of them are herb-based, just to let you know. So um, if it says standard process, it's going to be more food and maybe animal organs. If it says Medi Herb on it, it's going to be obviously more herbal. Uh, I always tell my patients if you're taking anything, food base is going to be much safer than herbal because if uh, you take an herb, and maybe it counteracts with the medication. So before you uh, get any form of supplements, um, anything herbal, please contact your pharmacy or your pharmacist. They're going to know more. Tell them what you're interested in taking and make sure it doesn't counteract with one of your medications now. So let me get my list before I forget because I've been talking so much, but I do have a list. <clears throat> Immuplex is one of my favorite. Uh, for children, um, my child, I've been throwing her on her supplements. And for children, I have a Congaplex chewable. Now, Congaplex, some people call it conja, and I say conga. Um, it's got a raspberry or cherry flavor to it that's natural. Um, it's chewable, and really, it's more to support acute, like I just got it, colds and flus, not chronic. But I still give it to her because I just want to keep her immune system up. And the other one that I like to give it to her is um, Thymex. Or there's also something called thymus PNG, but thymex supports your thymus gland. And your thymus gland is actually your immune system primer. And most people don't even know we have a thymus gland. Uh, I believe sweet bread, which they eat in Europe, is thymus. It just builds your immune system up. And it's very small tablets and it's easy for children to take. So, um, and it's safe. To me, I mean, you're eating an organ, we eat it in Europe. So I recommend the Congaplex chewables. I give her the Catalan chewables, which is a multivitamin and she can chew it. And I give her the thymus or the thymex gland uh, to keep her immune system up. I find those are very easy for children. So I'm gonna kind of tell you the things that I like to take. One of my favorites is Epimune. Epimune I like because it contains all the mushrooms, the vitamin C, the zinc. It's kind of one of my favorite. It's got the turkey tail in it, um, which remember I said turkey tail they use for treating patients with cancer. Kind of is like my go-to. Um, it is a little bit expensive, but this is the supplement I use, for example, when there was a chronic cough that was going around sometime in October, November, December, and everybody had it and lasted for like two weeks to a month. Um, the Epimune is what I ended up giving my family to get them through that because uh, my husband did get that. Um, and at that one, I did give to my child just to let you know. Um, it's a capsule, but she was able to swallow it, never had a problem, and knock on wood, we didn't get anything. 
I don't want to jinx myself at this point. The other one that I like is zinc liver chelate. Now, zinc liver chelate also we give to men. Now, men are more likely to catch COV-19 and to have complications. They've already shown that statistically. Zinc is not only good for the immune system, but zinc is necessary for men to make testosterone and to help with their hormones in their body and they need it more. Women usually need more copper. Men need, need more zinc. I find that if a man is on some type of testosterone therapy or anything like that, this is where I'm going to say you really need to do zinc. And the reason I like zinc liver chelate is because it comes from the tissue of liver. It's more natural. It's not a synthetic form of zinc, just to let you know. The other one that I like is the thymus PMG. That's where it's going to be more bang for your buck is the thymus gland. And this is the one I give to my child uh, and we take as well. They're very small pills. I think they're very easy to swallow or crush up if you need to. Um, the other one that we've been taking is as a protective is Resco and Bronc Effect. Now, Bronc Effect, we typically give to somebody for bronchitis. Resco we give for somebody who has coughs. They're showing a correlation with licorice root, helping with the immune system, and Resco has that. Um, so I like to encourage it. Also, Resco has ginger, which we talked about, ginger for inflammation. It has fennel, it has thyme, um, and it has mullein. And mullein leaf has been used forever, forever by herbalists for upper respiratory and lung conditions. So that's another one that I like to keep on hand just in case. Uh, there's also, there's this coughing thing going around again. So that's the one I like to use. Um, if you don't know if you need copper or zinc, Chesin is the one I usually recommend because it has both in there and it gives you just enough uh, to boost your immune system as well. But I still like the zinc liver chelate personally. Um, herbal throw spray. Uh, we can't keep this on the shelf. And one of the reasons I can't keep this on the shelf is my husband steals it from my clinic every time we get a batch in. And I'm like, stop stealing my stuff. But that's because herbal throat spray has the mullein, it has the echinacea, it has the sage, it has the thyme, it has clove. Um, you spray it in your mouth. It's your first line of defense. We talked about the IGAs are really important. The cool thing about herbal throat spray is I used to tell my patients if you're traveling or if I was on a flight, I would spray it on my finger and kind of rub it on the inside of my nose to be that first line of defense when I breathe in. Please wash your hands after you put your finger up your nose. But it, it is a first line of defense. I like it. Again, I'm not saying it's going to kill COV-19. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm just saying that the combination of herbs are really good and have been known to help with viruses and influenzas and things like that. I'm not saying anything's a cure and I'm not saying anything's going to prevent. I just need to put that out there. Uh, the other one Echinacea. Remember I said echinacea is a primer. So echinacea is really the thing that says, hey, let me get all my soldiers together before a war starts. That's kind of what it does. So we always encourage it. Colostrum. I love colostrum. Remember colostrum is what's in the breast milk that has all those IgAs, IgGs, IgMs. Um, we have chewable colostrum with a probiotic in it that I give for children. Again, that's something that my child takes. Um, and it's by ProLife. Uh, I personally like the pills. If you have babies and maybe you're bottle feeding, you want to open up the colostrum into the uh, formula and shake it up. It's perfectly safe and fine. At least you're giving some of your, that to your child's defense. If you have younger ones that won't swallow pills or chew them, you just open up the capsules. Now, the problem is, as I said, no dairy because dairy causes mucus, but you can add it in like a little bit of dairy or yogurt just to get them to get it down. Uh, powdered form is very easy, easy to consume. I have one more that I really like. Um, uh, it's a shiitake. Um, and it's, uh, it's called Ganoderma and shiitake, but actually it's a type of mushroom. And we usually recommend this for cancer immune system. 
Uh, but because it's got the mushrooms that we already know are great for building all immune systems against viruses, we recommend it. And that is an herb that would be considered an herb through Medi Herb, uh, even though it is a mushroom. Um, and then Immuplex is my last one I think I believe I talked to you about, or my first one that I talked to you about that I really love. And this is what we've been taking on a regular basis to keep our immune system up. So other things that you can do is you can buy garlic oils such as this. Um, if somebody doesn't like to take garlic, uh, I wouldn't recommend it. I would recommend just going ahead and eating the garlic if you can and cooking with it. It's a better habit to get into than taking 3,000 different pills and liquids. Potiarco is one of my other favorites. Um, it's an antiviral, antibacterial, antifungal, anti-yeast, yet they have not shown any research with COV-19, so, but it's just something on the table for you to know about. If you're interested in finding out a little bit more, I'm hoping to do another podcast soon. There's new research coming out next week, and I'm hoping to get to it and go sift through it and find more stuff that they're figuring out. But at this time, this is what I have for knowledge. If you're interested in the supplements, you are welcome to go to my website, uh, www.cahc.biz, or it's also under drsherryjohnson.com. Um, under the chiropractic section, when you hit that, there'll be a section that says supplements. You can click on that link and you can order supplements from there if you're interested in anything. I will tell you that supplements are very hard to come by. If you're going to order supplements off the shelf, please make sure they're organic and they've been lab tested. A lot of these supplements that people put on there are not lab tested and they're not organic. I hope you learned something from this. I had to quickly put this together um, and I'm hoping to get a little bit of a clearer uh, explanation of COV and what they're finding soon. If you're interested in an antibodies test, uh, you're welcome to email me at chiropractichealthal at gmail.com. Thanks guys for listening. And as I always say, take ownership of your health. It's now up to you to defend against the COV-19.